Welcome to Death and Aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm MK. And I'm Courtney. And uh, how, are, how are you? How's you know, life? It's, it's well. It's doing well. I, um, I've been going to a lot of shows again. <laughs> I'm Good. back in my, in my swing of Broadway. Um, so last Wednesday, we just had, a, I only was at work, only had to work till 11. So I had an entire Broadway day. I took the new um, assistants out to lunch and we had a delicious burger. And then Noelle came and met me and we went and saw Death of a Salesman. Yes. So good. And my besties were all amazing. And I sobbed at the end. And I I just looked at Noelle and I was like, I was like, that was so good. I sobbed at the end. She was like, I know. <laughs> so, it's like, oh, okay. Tears are just like on oh, my face. And uh, but it was very good. It was very long, very long, but it was really good too. Um, you know what's longer than it should be? Speaking of plays, Aladdin. Why is it that long? It is very long. I do really like Aladdin. Um, but it is very long. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so then we went to uh, Maggie's place, which is a bar that's, like, in the same family as my bars. Mm-hmm. And uh, Janine, my old manager, is the manager over there now. So we went and sat with her and had a couple of drinks. And then we went and saw Ain't No Mo, which is the other new show across the street from the bar. Nice. And, um, it was so fun. And they they did a great job. It was a little heavier. But the cast, it was, like, five cast members. And... They, I, I do you know anything about this show because it's new. Oh. So it's written by Jordan Cooper, who also stars in it. But he was out that day, which was fine because the guy that is his understudy is the guy that I know from the bar. So mm-hmm. I was glad I got to see him because I, I know him. Right. And, but like, what it is is it's a it's meant to be like a dark humor, um, like comment on society. Okay. And, So it's really well done, but it's like broken up to it's uh, 90 minutes straight through um, and it's broken up into like little short, almost skits, I guess, but they're not like like vignettes. Sure. I don't know what that word means, but yeah, probably. (laughs) I would guess so. That feels right. Mm -hmm. Um, And so in between there, the whole idea is that everyone that's like, uh, African American is able to go there, like get a free ride on a plane back to Africa if they want to go. It's meant to be like everyone's like, you know, when they're rude about like go back to Africa, they're like, oh, there's a plane just for you to go back to Africa now. So, uh, but it's like they're writing it, so it's meant to be like, it's very, it's, it, it's easier to watch than it is for you to explain. That's but fair. so in between each scene, there's um, Peaches the, uh, um, like flight check in her i guess she was checking all the like ids and stuff or whatever and so she was like the in-between scenes and then they go to another like a short skit and they were all like kind of weaved together but different so it was like the actors were really like incredible because they were able to transition so quickly from one character into another and it was just the same five characters through the whole show like so it was very good enjoyed it how are you? Good. So last week, well, two weeks ago, we had two snow days in a row. Right. Plus, it was a weekend. Yes, I was. And then, and then we had Thanksgiving break. So, in like six days, I spent no wait in in ten days. I spent one of them at school. The dream, which was great for me. Mm-hmm. And for the kids, but you know what wasn't great for Who my child, my child, Pip. So I was feeling very much like a bad mom. So last Saturday, I went to the pet store, and I spent way too much money buying all new like soil and pieces, and I redid his entire terrarium. And I went to see him, and 
he was being a little skittish, but then I picked him up and then he immediately climbed to his happy place right in the back of my neck with his face buried in my hair. And he was very happy to see me. And then I put his whole new setup in and there's like soil and some plants and like I just made it all cute. And then he was, and then I fed him a bunch of like regular mealworms and some wax worms to kind of fatten him up a little bit because I think he's too skinny. Mm-hmm. And he was really happy and he was like smiling at me and being all cute when I left him. And then this morning I came in to see him. And he was playing in the dirt and he was all having a good time. And um, and the soil that I used is like supposed to help with like the humidity and heat levels. And so like the tank was like down 10 degrees from the terrifying hot it was last week when I came to visit him. And so I'm just really happy because it's like weird. We've talked about this. It's weird because I've never had a pet. I don't know how to take care of things that are supposed to be alive. And you know, when you've never had a pet, a reptile is a really good place to start. Yeah. It's not. That was sarcasm. Um, oh, no, it's not. it's not. Because here's the thing. They're in a terrarium. So like you don't think about them. They're not running all over the place the way you would with a cat and a dog or something like that. But they need way more specific heat and humidity oh, and true. food. And like they're like the like they will die if it gets to this or like you have to and like they don't bark at you if they're not happy like you just gotta know what coloring to look for and what thickness of their tail to look for like it's way more difficult to communicate with a reptile than it is with a mammal that is true i spoke coke on sadie today and i know she's not happy with me now because she hasn't talked to me since so she's very easy to read (laughs) yeah i mean and i'm getting better but like i'm also I've only had Pip for two months. So, and it's a reptile. So, like, there are days when I'm like, maybe I'm just like a really, really bad mom. No, you're great. You're a great lizard mom. So, um, you know what's a great starter pet? A fish. Correct. Like, as long as you like give it some flakes every day, make sure it stays cleaned out. You can even get one of those little like sucker fish so you don't even have to clean it as much. You do have to be careful that your, like, filtration system has the right electricity and everything, though. Um, Adam, Adam the betta fish for mm-hmm. the science class, he died today. Oh, that's a real bummer. It is. He doesn't mean, though. So maybe it was, like, a good rinse thing. Maybe it was, like, payback. Because they're mean. But they're usually well, very pretty. They're Oh, he was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was the first class pet like of all of the middle school teachers and all of our class pets he was the first one. Oh, that's sad in of an era but it's okay because pip is the baby so he's the most exciting for everyone anyway and because he's a lizard it's true i mean lizards are way more exciting than fish let me tell you you know what else is exciting what is that inspiration spirituality yeah. guidance my sweater matches the wall it does you are correct look at you you are so coordinated mine does too because everything i have is black and white <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. yes yes so um <clears throat> Ironically enough, when you make peace with the fact that the purpose of life is not happiness, but rather experiencing growth, happiness comes as a natural byproduct. When you are not seeking it as the objective, it will find its way to you. That's painful. I don't like when shit just like comes at you like that. Well, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to attack you. Okay. It's my favorite thing to do. You know what I'm here for? I to attack your club. To tell you all about Stargate SG1. My new fave show. So today on this fine sci-fi Sunday, we are talking about Stargate SG1 season two, episode 17, entitled Holiday. Now I have to make an apology. Oh, gosh. Because 
Apparently, the IMDB application for your phone tells you the first time a show has ever aired, not the actual air date. And remember, two weeks ago in our trivia, we discussed the fact that Stargate started appearing on Sky One in the UK before it appeared in the US. Oh, yes, yes. So the last two weeks, my date that the episode aired was not correct. You were a liar? I was a liar. Oh, my goodness. It aired in December in the UK, but it didn't air until January in the US. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when I went to look this episode up, the IMDb on my phone was saying that it aired in January of 1999, but that's only in the UK. The US air date was February 5th, 1999. So I wanted to, I wanted to clear that up before I jumped to the fact that we suddenly seemed to skip a whole other month, yeah. but it wasn't, it wasn't. We had just skipped two months instead of one month before. Totally fair, yes. Yeah. And that makes more sense also in the... It, it does make more sense in the terms of when American TV shows are on. Like, right. ending, in November and, ending in November and coming back mid-January makes more sense than ending in November and coming back mid-December. Right, yes. That makes way more sense. So I apologize, because that also means that, like, my fun facts were... <laughs> Useless. Um, so this episode did come out on February 5th, 1999. Now, I'm going to be honest, I forgot to look up if anything happened on that day because I did my notes at 11 o'clock at night last night. So just for fun, we're going to look that up right now. Sure. I was a child. I was starting school. I think this is my first. No, I started. I think I started ninety eight. So this might have been like the end of my kindergarten year. Um, I that's not I, right. Yeah, yeah. I would have been just about to turn seven, so it would probably have been end of kindergarten. So this would have been end of pre K for you. Did you go to pre K? Mm. I went to a preschool called Pep. And it was separate from my actual school Mm. from the time I was, like, three. Mm, Okay. I was there for, like, a few years. But, yes, I did. So this was before I started. So I I started kindergarten in 99 Mm -hmm. in the fall. That makes sense. Um, The number one song on February 5th of 1999. And I now feel really uncomfortable when I realized that I was in kindergarten. Because the number one song... Yes. Was Baby One More Time by Britney Spears. <laughs> Me. I can't see it. We don't have any copyright rights. I don't know what I'm doing. Correct. It's just um, one of those the, num- the number one movie was The Gem. Gem. Starring Frey Prince Jr. and Rachel Lee Cook. As I was saying, starring the gem that stars Freddie Prince Jr. and Rachel Lee Cook. Yes, I was right. She's All That was the Uh, number one movie. Such a great movie. Such a great movie. Uh Uh-huh. 90s. Right? And the top book was Southern Cross by Patricia Cornell. Um, we did talk about Patricia Cornwall before because she also had a bestseller in 98. Um, Good for her. It's a different series. So she has two big series that she wrote. This is from the other one. But I did recognize the cover. Like I looked at the book and I've definitely seen that cover before. It's like a blue. It's like a. It's called um, Southern Cross and it's like a blue background with a Confederate flag on the cover. Mm-hmm. And I've definitely seen that book cover before, but I've never read the book, and I know nothing about the series. So I have not seen this cover before. Mm-hmm. I know nothing about. Th- I mean, I've I've heard of Patricia Cornwell, but other than that, I yeah. I don't know anything about this book. Um, 
The episode was directed by David hey, Wiersma. Do you want to tell me what the rating was? Oh. Yeah, sure. I would love to. I didn't write it down, though. Apparently. I would love to know. Um, why? I would love to know why you need to know so badly. It's just routine. I like to it, follow the routine. It is fair. I was like, did you feel strongly about what it should be rated? No, this episode was fine. It was not, it wasn't the best one I've seen. It wasn't the worst one I've seen. It was just kind of average for me. Which is fair because that's about what it was rated. It was rated a uh, 7.4 stars. Yep. I would have said maybe 7.6. So 7.4 is fine. Yep. Um, it was directed by David Warrior Smith and written by Tor Alexander Valenza. So both return. The guest star that we're going to talk about. Now, if you had to pick a character that you think I would talk about as the guest star, who do you think I would talk about? Martello. Yeah, I'm not. Okay. Because, because, because Marcello is played by Michael Shanks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. What uh, twist? <laughs> so uh, there's nothing to say that we haven't already said. Michael Shanks does <laughs> everyone. Fact, yes. Um, in fact, he, he does play quite a few characters. Who is he now? He's him. He's Thor. He's Michello. And he, anyone more? Um, not that we've seen. Oh, not yet. Okay. Um, yeah, no, not that we, not that we've seen. Um, also, He's the voice of Thor, but he wasn't the visual of right, Thor. Right. Um, Michello is the only character on the show that is played by Michael Shanks visually, not voice. He does voices all the time, but Michello is the only character played by Michael Shanks that is not an alternate future past dystopian version of Daniel. Right. I need to look up his face again. While you're telling me about the 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 actual Dester, the yes. character that I chose because I have nothing to say about Michael Shanks other than that I love him okay. is Elvin Sanders, who played Fred. Ah, Fred. He looks familiar. Have I seen? I've seen him in stuff then. Yeah. So Fred was played by Elvin Sanders, who, um. You probably know because he played Pop Tate in Riverdale. You're right. We saw him on something else recently then. We did. Um, he's had about a million roles. Right. Um, yes. All voiceover, really. Mm -hmm. um, including the fact that he played um, Mr. Popo in Dragon Ball Z. He has a shit ton of anime voices also. The oh. thing is, he has a shit ton of anime voices. And so I'm looking at him, and I'm looking at him, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, Dad, I understand that this man was in Riverdale. I didn't watch it. I also understand that he was in, like, five episodes of the original MacGyver. Because, of course, he was, because everything goes back to MacGyver. But again, MacGyver, yeah. doesn't, doesn't ring a bell. He was in one episode of Dead Like Me. That's the one. I was like, we just talked about him in another well, show. But here's the thing. We didn't talk about him. Because he played a mailman. Like, he wasn't a big enough character that we would have talked about him. He literally played a mailman. I feel like I said, that guy looks familiar. And you said, oh, he's Pop Tate. Because I feel like... Maybe just in terms of, like... Yeah, he wasn't like a... a okay, yes. Okay, he wasn't that. like who he wasn't who we focused on for our, right. our star of the episode. Right. No. Um, but yes, so he played the mailman in the episode of Nighthawks. Which we love. Yes, we did. Um, but the fun fact that I wanted to share about him is that um, he knew from a very young age he wanted to do acting. And when he was still in high school in 1969, um, when he was 17, he founded um, his own theater company called Black Arts West Theater, which um, did close in the 80s. But by, by 1973... It was the second largest black theater in the country outside of the Negro Theater Alliance, Negro Theater Alliance in New York City. 
Good for him. Yeah, so he is pretty fucking cool. And like I said, he is literally still doing like voiceover work all the fucking time. He's amazing. He he's done Dragon Ball. He's done Inuyasha. He's done basically oh, Inuyasha. Yeah, he's favorite. done basically like anything like Marvel that has an animated thing. He's been in it. Anything DC that's had an animated thing, he's been in it. Like he is. Okay. He's the um. What's his name? The guy who's in all the Disney movies. You know who I'm talking about. That he does a voiceover. He has a voice in every Disney movie. He plays. Oh, Mia. um, 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 John Ratzenberger. He's the John the John Ratzenberger of the rest of the world. Right. Um, but also, I also while researching him figured out what I need more than anything in life. Yes. And that is an IMDb, but for commercials. That should exist, right? Like I, I can't find it anywhere. But like I want to know because I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure that the reason this man's face is so familiar is because he does commercial work. Because the few things that his face has been in isn't enough for his face to stick out to me that much. But I can't find like a list of here are all the things that I was a commercial for, like in a commercial for Alvin Sanders. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm so, that's what I want. I want to be like, here is the, all of the, even if it's not every commercial, but like all of the companies that ever had this person in a commercial for them. Yeah. So like Rob Gronkowski, USAA, (laughs) Verizon. Little Caesars. Yes. Like I need that. I need like. Okay. I don't I don't know I'll why Rob what's that? I'll build it. You build it? Perfect. I don't know why Rob Gronkowski was the only one I could think of in that moment for like <laughs> who did commercials. Who's done commercials? This this guy. No. Or but like and then there would be funny ones, like the uh, can you hear me now guy and how his is Verizon, but then it's also Sprint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um so this episode starts. Oh, 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 so sorry. I just looked at my notes and I saw another fun fact that I wrote that I forgot to share with you, but it is the most important fun fact I've ever written down in my life. Oh my gosh, I'm ready. So while I am sitting here trying to figure out why his face is so familiar and Googling commercials and doing all this stuff and going into a mm-hmm. fucking rabbit hole last night, I found his Instagram. Okay. This man's Instagram has like two pictures of himself in costumes of things. And every single other picture on his verified Instagram account is a fucking bird. He bird watches oh and does bird photography and just posts absolutely nothing but pictures of birds. Oh my gosh, you guys would be besties. I was like, Mom, look at that crow. Look at that dog. Oh, and I was, like, I was like freaking out at 11 o'clock last night about this man and his love of birds. I've never felt I've never felt more kindred spirited with a human being than Alvin Sanders and his voiceover bird photography, like just happy, happy art loving self like i Ooh. i wish this man nothing but peace and joy for his whole life he's so cute as pop tate though he was the perfect pop tate i'm just looking off his birds now aren't they oh, that the one with the club crow in flight like four rows down he's just so happy in the pictures he's in everything they gave him a bobblehead of himself and he's just like thrilled yeah oh, the happiest man alive and he needs to stay that way i i love forever him. Okay, so now that I'm done looking at his birds, I'm gonna follow him. You know what? I didn't. I didn't because I was on my computer, but I'm going to now. Mm-hmm. We're that gonna follow him the podcast too. Don't worry. Don't worry, because Elvin Sanders and his birds deserve all of the follows. Everyone, um, hit or miss on birds, but I just love how happy he is about life and how incredibly he, like of an actor he is. So yeah, no, um. If you love 
me or birds, you should. Where did? Or happiness. That's if you like happiness. Him. Yeah, that's true. If you love happiness, why can't I find him? I don't know, but I followed him and Death and Aliens followed him, so. Yeah, no, so he should be showing up much faster than he is. In fact, I saw him and it was like followed by CE Cloud and then mm -hmm. I lost him again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so while I'm also found him. Yeah. Um, he's also currently in Resident Alien, which is supposed to be a really good show. It's um, Todd Lundick. Lundick? Yes. I also, never remember. Sorry. His. His bio on Instagram also, it says actor, word lover, written and spoken, dual American Canadian citizen, which I knew, mm -hmm. Un unionized worker, needlepoint hobbyist. He's this incredible. Man, this man is joy incarnate. He is. That's all he is, is joy. Ugh. But yeah, so he's also in Resident Alien. And he just got a role, I think the show's out already, but in Devil in Ohio. So he's like thriving and still very active, not just in the animated world. Correct. Um, so this episode starts with a weird gate room with like shrouds and then the team comes through. And um, they find this device with all it these symbols like on it. <laughs> Fun fact. So, you know, how sometimes I share the trivia all well before I get to the end. Um, it is, in fact, an Apple Newton, which was um, a failed attempt at a tablet by Apple, um, and it was a precursor to the iPad. That's exactly what that tablet was. So a PDA, yeah, that, that is, it is what it was. We are in 1999. Correct. <laughs> Um, so, but Teal doesn't recognize the device or the symbols, and so they're trying to kind of figure out what's going on, and they're looking around, and then there's this weird room in the back of the, the room, and Daniel is like, who's there? And this guy's like, me! <laughs> I'm there. It's like, Daniel, why are you so weird all the time? Every episode. Um... And this man appears from behind the curtain, and he's old as fucking shit. Mm -hmm. And um, Teal's like, oh, I recognize your face. And I was like, it's Santa, can't you tell? Right. <laughs> it's titled Holiday. This is Santa Claus. Where I don't know what, what more you needed. Um, 10 out of 10 critical thinking skills. Um, um, but his name is Marcello. And Teal'c is like, you are a fugitive who fought against the Gaul. Like, you're wanted. Like, I recognize your face. I was, like, taught what your face looked like from her a wee long time ago. And then he just, like, weirdly starts copying everything they say to him. They're like, oh, it's nice to meet you, Michello. I'm Daniel Jackson. He's like, I'm Daniel Jackson. Well, like, good for this guy. Before he started <laughs> copying everyone. Because then he started being a weirdo. Right. He started being a real fucking weirdo. And um, he's then he's like, here, let me show you my invention. <laughs> so when I got when somebody who looks like um, the caught the disguise Jafar uses in the prison in Aladdin <laughs> starts showing you his weird invention, don't follow him. That should not have needed to be explained, but apparently it was. That face was amazing. I'm guessing your copy is not hot anymore. Um, It's very much not hot anymore, and I just really wanted it to be a little warm still, and it scared me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it really caught me off guard. It should not have, because I've had that coffee for like four hours. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, So he and Daniel touch the invention that looks kind of like a weird like seesaw slash robot. Like... You know Canine, the dog from Doctor Who? Mm -hmm. It looks like if you took two canines and stuck them together and then put, like, bicycle handles on the top. Yeah, it makes me think of the little, like, horsies you ride at the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're frozen, but I bet you know what I'm talking about. I, I sure do. At the same time. 
I sure do. Um, in 99, we were children and we rode uh, quarter horses at the grocery store. Um, although I didn't ever, I think, really ride them. Um, I don't know how long I can continue rambling about uh, quarter horses at the grocery store. Um, but it's fine. Um, You're back. I'm back, and I talked through all of that, so it's fine. Um, but I didn't talk about anything useful or intelligent, so we didn't miss anything. Um, That's fine. Um, but when they touch it at the same time, he pa- immediately passes out. And so they're like, okay, well, pick him up. He still has a pulse. Let's take him to SGC. Um, and they go back. And um, I think that's where the credits were. Yeah. Um, and then they, they are back in the infirmary and the SGC. And um, uh, Janet has checked everything. Um, but Dan and Daniel's vitals are fine. But he seems like weirdly jumpy. And he says he's just super exhausted. And Very Janet's like, like fidgety. Yeah, and Janet's like, well, that that's fine. But it, like, it makes sense that you're tired. You just had a like intense electric shock like right. if it doesn't go away in a few days like we'll do something um she's like but you can't drive right. good good move so um they they also um she also tells um daniel that Michello's body is covered from head to like basically from head to toe in scars from like severe electrocution and she thinks that he was like tortured for years poor thing um then we go to the headquarters like briefing room and Sam has a tablet and she can't read it. So she's like telling um, him and everything that she like found, but she like can't read it. And she asks Teal and he can't either. And so she, Daniel arrives and she like shows it to him and he's like, nope, I have no idea what it says either. Um, but he is like, but actually like uh, Dr. Frazier said it would probably be best if I go home and rest. And Hammond's like, okay, take a day, like go. Yes. Right, because, you know, they're not fucking prisoners on this base. That's one of the things that I think, like, that is interesting. Because we so very rarely leave base, except for, like, through gate adventures, that you almost, like, forget that they don't live there. Right, right. Even though we've had episodes where they've been in the world. Right. Like, Teal Teal stays there because he doesn't have a house, and he's technically not really, like, living there. But like, and it's also so like, I don't. I also don't think Teal would like cares. No, absolutely not. And like, but, they have like. It seems like they all have like sleeping quarters there because they yeah, they definitely like, yeah, they have like would, sleeping quarters there, but they fucking have houses, right? That they just are never at. Right, it was like such a waste. I would not be paying rent. I mean, but they do things like they're in the one episode they were like since you came in to work this morning like they they do have like days on and days off kind of thing um it's just more like hospital like it's just more like like long like where you'll have like four days on three days off kind of shifts instead of like nine to fives yeah. I don't know couldn't fucking be me but like whatever um, I probably do it. <laughs> I have a weird schedule. Um, so he does. He gets dropped out. Daniel leaves. He gets dropped off at his apartment building, but then he doesn't go in his apartment. He just like follows some chick Wonderful. on the street. Yeah. Meanwhile, Macello wakes up and calls for Jack and Sam and Teal. Mm-hmm. And they, Jack is very confused. He's like, "How the fuck do you know our names?" And it turns out Daniel is in Michello's body. Yep. Real and freaking they, Friday. 
It's a real creepy Friday. They do all this like weird question testing to try to figure out who, if it is actually Daniel, and they ask him about Cassandra, and they ask him about the original gate mission, and then what finally convinces Jack that it's actually Daniel is that he asks what his Daniel's sister wore when he took her out last week, and Daniel says, "I don't have a sister, and if I did." would not let you take her out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yep, yeah, well, that's correct. Yeah, accurate, correct answer. Which means, if Daniel's in Michelle's body, who the fuck is out walking around? Yeah. It turns out, it's Michelle in Daniel's body. Yeah, and a weirdo. And being the weirdest of weirdos. <laughs> He's walking around walking up to fucking strangers and like I think I don't know exactly what city they're supposed to be in I don't either I think it is probably Denver okay and so I mean Denver has some weirdos in it but like, like not like this yeah he's just like teach me your customs show me how to be human like fucking weird shit. hi friend it's like hi. Oh, hello friend yeah. and um then this homeless man named fred is like hey you're strange you can't <laughs> just like ask people for shit on the street talking like a weirdo and Michello goes you're talking like a weirdo asking people for things on the street so you must also be strange and fred's like well i I guess well that's strange though right and he's like well we're both strange we should be friends um let me shall we have a feast and michelle or and fred obviously as a homeless man is like on you he's like yeah let's feast on me but she has no idea let's feast on me yeah um then we go back to the base where Janet has run some brain scans and we find out that the old man is for sure for sure Daniel um because the actual neuron pattern of his cerebral cortex has been remapped onto this body. Yeah. Yep. Um Good so time. now they need to find Daniel's body. Mm-hmm. Um So Jack is like, well, while people are out trying to figure out where Daniel's body is, we should go back to that planet and retrieve the device that did this. Yes. Correct. Um, And they go. And Sam is also like, well, let me just like get more information. So maybe I can translate this weird tablet. Okay. Um, so while they're go there, she finds a hibernation chamber and she figures out that that's probably what like has kept Matello alive for so long. Because he sure should not be alive anymore. He is very old. So while she's looking at the hibernation chamber, Jack and Teal are trying to figure out how to pick up this device. That they have no idea what it does. And when they pick mm-hmm. it up. Very clear to me. It's a Freaky Friday device. I don't know why that's like so yeah. good. But when they pick it up. The greatest moment in SG-1 happens when Teal'c and Jack switch bodies. That made me so happy. I was like, Literally. we had to see Teal'c be like a normal, non-stiff person. Which is Literally. Weird. Literally, I'm pausing it to take notes. And my mom goes, I love this episode so much because I love getting to see Christopher Judge like just act like a person. And yes. I was like, I go, first of all, I can't wait to see how Courtney feels about it because she's going to be fucking obsessed. And I go, and second of all, what's even better than seeing Christopher Judge get to act like Christopher Judge is seeing Richard Dean Anderson attempt to be stoic. Like, Oh my gosh. He, not not so great at the stoicism. Not as great at the stoicism, but mostly, I would have loved to be a fly on the wall of the filming of this episode because watching, because the thing is, it's not even just that they're acting like the other characters. They're mimicking each other as humans. Like, Christopher Judge is being Richard Dean Anderson as Jack. And Richard Dean Anderson is being Christopher Judge as Teal. And, like, 
I would have, I feel like they just like cracked up and lost their shit after every take. Yeah. Well, they're so good at each other's bannerism. So good. Like, they could have just switched roles entirely and been, like, the same person still. Like, they're so good at it. Mm-hmm. So, they argue about their bodies. Yeah. And um, Jack is pissed that he can feel Junior. And uh, Silk is like, yeah, but I can't. <laughs> He's like, you think it's weird for you? It's also weird for me. And Sam's like, well, let's experiment. And she's like, maybe if we touch it in a different order, or maybe if we um, touch it on different sides, like there's an inside and an outside, and like. Bless her. Working. She's trying. She's trying. It's not working. Um, and then it turns out that Tilk's body is sick. And we learn some important Jaffa information. And that is that in order for the symbiote to fix it, the Jaffa has to be in a state called Kelnorine. And this is the first time we hear that word, but it's basically like a deep, deep, deep meditation. I really thought they were going to put him in a coma. Um, I thought for a second, maybe they would have to, because the idea of Jack meditating Chill was hysterical, hysterical to me. Um, but then we flip back to Fred and Michello and they go into a diner and tell the waitress that everyone is feasting on him. And she's like, okay, great, but you're going to need a credit card. And he's like, what is that? And she, she, he opens his wallet and she takes the credit card and he's like, you are an exquisite woman. And she, he's like, I would love a kiss. And she's like, yeah, fucking bet you would, bro. (laughs) I was like, poor Daniel, his bank account is about to be wiped. Like, I hope he's a lot richer than I feel like he is because that is a lot of money spent at a diner. To be fair, he's a military paid um, scientific expert on a top secret project. So he's definitely well paid and he never fucking leaves the base. That's true. So, like, you look at him, he's one of those people, and you're like, you're just average. (laughs) Yeah, right. But that's the thing is, he's so fucking, he's he's frugal as shit. Yeah. He's absolutely got tons of money just posted up. Well, I hope he doesn't lose it all in 30 seconds. He does. Um, So, then we go back to um, this scene that is so fucking counterintuitive. Because Jack is doing basically guided meditation to his own voice, but it's Teal's voice. And that is some trippy meta shit that I could not handle. So like, meta. If somebody was leading me through guided meditation with my own voice. No, I would be freaked out. Right. Um, yeah. Um, then we, uh, while, uh, Jack is slipping into meditation, we find that we switch to, um, old man Daniel, who is, um, very upset because he can't read the language and he's struggling and he can't help Sam and he can't move because he's old and broken and he's really upset. And then he just gets so stressed out that he goes into a coma. Yeah. So that's that's great. Always a good time. Always a good time. Sorry, you're skipping a bit there, but but you're mm-hmm. not. Then we go back to the diner where Fred is questioning Michello because he thinks that his weirdness is like some Gulf War PTSD. Yeah. Well, Which- like, what other conclusion do you come to? Like, no one's gonna be like, "Oh, you're an alien from a different planet." Oh, for sure. You're trying to figure it out. Like, he's just, he's trying so hard to be rational. Yeah. Well, but then, how do you even stay rational when you have Michello explaining that the human race is still alive because of him and that he and Fred are going to live forever? Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would probably leave. 
I'd be like, I'm going to get this to go. And maybe like order another meal to go to because right. the credit card's already on file. Right. Um, but like, I'm not going to hang out. With he's anymore. like, all I ever want in my life forever is ice cream sundaes and cheeseburgers and french fries. And I was like, that's a sad life. Like, those are all wonderful things. But like, do you know how many other wonderful things there are out there? So many. Like rice pudding and pecan pie. Ugh. Such great things. And like Doritos. Mm, yes. Mm. So, can we go back to base where Jack has awoken from Kelma Wait, Green? Also, in this point, oh, yeah. Talking about how he also just wants to have a wife. Oh, yeah. And I was like, Daniel Jackson, you already have a wife. Stop trying to get married again. And but it's not Daniel. Daniel. It doesn't matter. This body already has a wife. I don't think it's a, is it, is that how that works? That's how it works now. I'm making the rules because nothing makes sense. But like if a marriage is a soul contract is, and your soul and body are separated, does, does the marriage stay with the soul or with the body? Both. Both old man Daniel and regular Daniel are married to Share. <laughs> Neither of them can get married again. End of story. You need the you need both parts to have a person. So that's how it goes. But then like what if your spouse dies and you believe that souls are eternal? Does that mean that your second spouse, if you got remarried, you're only married to their body and not their soul? Absolutely. That's fucked up. New rules. I'm I'm here to set new rules. Don't worry. <laughs> It's absolutely don't die dan well i guess you could die but second husband you're just a body you're no soul oh no dan and i have already agreed that if either one of us dies we're going into victorian mourning and then coming back to haunt you oh, I'm aware. Yeah. I'm aware. yeah he's not all, he's not allowed to die right no he won't don't worry um so then jack wakes up from kelmarine and he's like super impressed with the symbiote actually like healing him, how great he feels. But Can you spell um, this word for me? Kelno Reen. Mm-hmm. It's K E L apostrophe N O R E E N. Thank you. I needed to visualize the word while I was trying to say it in my head. Yeah. Um. So, but when he wakes up, he looks over and the Jack body teal is not there. So he goes into the bathroom where Tilk is cutting Jack's hair. And Jack is like, what are you doing? He's like, if I'm to stay in this body, I need to have a shaved head. Jack is going to lose his mind. This might be the funniest scene of dialogue I've in the entirety of the show. <laughs> like... Oh, uh, it was so he, crazy. He was like, don't you dare. He was like, D- if you, I'm going to go. And then when I don't cut, you dare cut the hair <laughs> on my head until I get back. It's like, what the fuck? Uh, poor Jack. It was it literally, it's probably one of my favorite scenes of all time on the show. Yes. Um... But so Jack goes to General Hammond and they say that they have found Michello because Daniel Jackson's credit card was just used. <laughs> and so Jack is like re- request to permission to like go retrieve him. And he's like, look at you. No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I literally wrote jo- George says no, sir. And then I go, ew, I just wrote George. But George, George, was, George uh, I am was back. all up in my confusion with Don S. Davis because I just saw him on X Files. I know I talked about this last week too. Yeah, and I've been listening to the X Files podcast, so I'm on the episode where they're talking about him. Yes, and then I've been watching Stargate, and so I'm just like, I'm in a circle of Don S. Davis. That's fine. It's not a bad place uh, to be, but it's a weird place sometimes. Um, that's fair. 
Um, but I just, George, because I had written it so many times, because my dad and my brother, it's much faster to write for me. So I wrote it because I was trying to do notes quickly. And then I go, ew, don't call him George. Well, my, um, I call him John S. Davis or Hammond. Hammond. Uh, <laughs> I always say Hammond or the general. Mm -hmm. But then I don't like to say the general because then I go, um, in my brain, I go, um, uh, talk to the general and save some time or like whatever the jingle for the, the general yeah. insurance is. Um, so then we go to back to the street where Michelle and Fred are uh, walking down the street and also the cops appear and Michelle's like, I'm not going back. And Fred, and this was heartbreaking because like as a homeless African-American man, who's a veteran being that afraid of the cops like that was like a whole different level of like heartbreaking that they then didn't go into but it was like just enough to make you like realize it was that just that a brief moment because he was like he was like i know them better you just gotta just put your hands up don't run and like that is a commentary not on just on race but also on like the treatment of homeless veterans and it was like small enough to make you angry but like not big enough to take away from the episode and i just well done yes um um so fred's just like really upset about them um arresting michello but of course they don't actually understand what's happening mm -hmm. um but then we go back to sgc where daniel wakes up just in time but Michello explains that even if he wanted to go back in his old body, he can't because the machine itself retains memory of every transference, so it can't do a reversal. And I don't understand why. Like, I don't understand why it can't do a reversal. Like, it's it's just it's just written into the code that once two bodies switch, they can't go back. Like, okay. Oh, okay. It's, so it's just in the code. It's not like a... It's, it's the way he wrote it into the machine code, like that it holds onto a memory of the transference and it won't reverse the transference. Got it. Got it. Which is basically like to save the um, people from like gold memories. And, like and it, it has a reason. It's just not good for this situation. Right, right. But then I paused it and I said, I know the solution. I go, I mean, I'm 90% sure I know the solution in general anyway, but like, I know what the solution should be. And I was like, you know that scene in Scooby Doo where they have little ghost heads and they fling them to shoot them back to the bodies but then they don't go in the right bodies and then Fred's in Daphne's body and he's like I can look at myself naked mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like that's how they're going to do it absolutely perfect it's like when did this episode air I said 1999 she said when did Scooby-Doo come on I said 2002 she's like so Stargate Scooby-Doo stole it from Stargate not the other way around I go yeah but nobody in Stargate is thinking about looking at themselves naked well and, my, and and dad goes that's why sam wasn't in on the switching right yes <laughs> yes that was just what i was about to say um but so um they put michelle basically in prison because i don't know what else to do with them well what else do do? right yeah, and he's like listen the language that you guys are trying to uh, decode, you're never going to decode it because that's not a language. It's literally a unique code that I created. I'm the only one who knows it. And I will teach it to you in exchange for my freedom in this body. And she's like, but that's my friend. And he was like, he's just a casualty of war. Like, that's how war works. I was so fussy at him. I was like, how dare you? Right. Basically... So General Hammond's response was also my response in my head. <laughs> yeah. So General Hammond and Sam are basically like, here, why don't you explain your utter lack of remorse and bullshit to Daniel? Like, look in your own face and say that. 
Um, and so he's talking to Daniel and Daniel is like, you realize that what you just did makes you no better than the gold. And he's like, that's not true. Like, I'm not a gold. Like, he's very adamant that he's, like, not like the gold. And he's like, but you took over my body without asking me and made myself a host just because you made me a host because your body wasn't good enough to survive. And that is, and rather than passing down the knowledge that you have to someone younger and more fit, you're doing it this way that makes you know better than them. And he's like, I'm not like them. My wife was killed, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, my wife was also taken, but he, she wasn't killed. There's still a chance to save her. And you're taking that chance away. You're giving, taking away my opportunity to have the life that you couldn't have for yourself because you're selfish. Because we finally remember we have a wife again. Correct. Um, and, uh, and so many horror movies have been built off of this trope specifically that people get older and they take younger people's bodies and the younger people die yeah and um then daniel starts to die in michelle's body and in that moment watching him die michelle finally starts to feel remorse and um is like i wish i could help but like literally i'm actually the only person who can't help and wait, and Sam's like, wait, only I have an idea. And so they play Swaparoo. She says, we're going to play musical chairs with your bodies. I was like, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> it does sound dangerous, but it worked out pretty well. Everybody ends up back in their own body. Um, by the end of this episode... There have now been five different actors playing the role of Colonel Jack O'Neill. <laughs> because oh, I see what you're saying. Kurt Russell, uh, Richard Dean Anderson, the guy who played the teenage version of him in the flashback, mm-hmm. uh, Daniel or Michael Shanks and Christopher Judge have now all played Jack O'Neill. <laughs> Um, so but um, my favorite part of them swapping was um, when Daniel who is the only one who's not really aware of what they're about to do like finds himself in Jack's body and then turns around to see him, his own body standing yeah. there and it's like what um <laughs> But basically, all's well that ends well. Everybody's back in their right body, and... The last line is, welcome back, SG-1. And I was like, oh, it gave me fuzzy feelings. It was some fuzzy feelings. Um, I don't believe there's any trivia that I didn't already say. (laughs) Um, Because I think all the trivia was easily just, like, thrown in in other places. In the episode, but of course now the IMDb app doesn't want to work because I am not on the internet because the internet doesn't work. So you know it's like all, all just winning. Um, what the shit? <laughs> Literally, the trivia is not here. Um, no trivia. No trivia. Um, we need oh, but I do I do want to um I like when there are 10 out of 10 star reviews and also one out of 10 star reviews on this episode. <laughs> I also so, like that. So the 10 out of 10 star review says okay. So it's not really a 10 episode. But I over oh. but I overcompensated for the unfair low scores. <laughs> standard mind body swap sci-fi fair but very enjoyable due to the performances michael shanks is great as michello and briefly o'neill but i what i really loved was christopher judge's performance his o'neill imitation was spot on to the point where you really feel like he was a different person it also showed his acting chops for when he plays normally revert for when mm, 
for when he plays his normally reversed teal because Richard Dean Anderson couldn't match Judge's personality swap imitation. It's not like Anderson did a bad job. It just highlighted how underrated Judge is. Yes. Which I think is 100%. And like you said, not a 10 out of 10 really, but like some of these reviews are garbage. So they just was like, it's a good episode. So I'm just throwing a 10 in there to like make up for it. Because this review, one out of 10 stars. Worst episode ever. Strong. I am so angry so far binge watching on Netflix. And thus, the doctor at the SGC they have in the bunker is the worst fake doctor I've ever seen on TV. Do not How dare about, you. Do not talk about Janet that way. Janet is a doll. She always says the person is healthy and good to go. Then they have some virus, parasite, or alien in them. Right, that is very much not true, though. There have been a lot of times where she's like, something's wrong. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Sorry, that is no excuse for the most advised military on the planet. And to make matters worse, she doesn't get any better. She makes the same mistakes all the time. I'm a military veteran, and she would have been court-martialed and booted from the military long ago. Okay, were you in the military who went to different planets and had aliens inside of them? She's learning on the fly. These are all new things. She wasn't taught this in med school. I have a lot of strong feelings about this person's review. Honestly, honestly, if she's a civilian, then she would have never been hired. At the end of the episode, she did everything to keep Daniel alive, but when Daniel switched out, she does nothing to. Wrong. She turns into Dr. Death. What the fuck, man? This is not cool. This has frustrated me, and this actress has frustrated me to the point where she should have been replaced. She is the reason SG-1 fell apart. The rest of the cast is beloved. They have a unique way of acting that connects to each one of us, but this doctor is like a robot doing her acting job, and that is it. How dare they? I would but like to, to be, report that. To be fair, of the 32 people who have reviewed that review, only two of them agreed. Like, it has 30 thumbs downs. I'm going to go thumbs down it. So just stop down it because rude. It is rude. Um, but once again, the trivia is still somehow missing from this IMDb page. I don't understand. Oh, just kidding. I found it. Um, nope. I literally told you all of the trivia already. Excellent. Um, so who would you like? punch Michello. fair um Michello is the correct answer and <laughs> despite having just gone angry and defensive I think I would have to punch Dr. Frazier purely okay. because Mostly because nobody else really did anything worth punching. And mm-hmm. I don't know why. Because, again, I don't think that that review was entirely accurate. I don't mm-hmm. think she's a bad actress. I do think there's some things that are clearly just story loopholes. Because at this point, why is, like a CT, not part of your vital scans. Right. Yes, that should be. With the number of times that they've had mind-altering things happen, a CT should be part of the vital scans. And if your CT shows an entirely different neuron network than you had when you left, then it is a question mark. Yes. And I'm not saying, like, there have been some things that there was no way that they would have caught them, but that one seems like too easy of a fix. Right. Yes. I do agree with that. I I, I don't agree that it's always that easy, but in this episode, I do think there mm-hmm. could have been a different fix. Yeah. So. I'm like, you oh. shouldn't let him go if he's not 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and she said he couldn't drive for a few days, but why did she let him leave at all? Right. You should, like, keep him under um, observation. Yeah. Agreed. 100%. Um, 
Um, so who is your MVP? Fred. Fred's a great one. I just love him so much. I do love Fred. Um, my MVP is going to be Teal'c for being able to keep Jack calm in his body. In <laughs> Because I think um, com successfully getting Jack O'Neill to meditate deeply enough that a gold can run free in his mind is a level of um, successful that I will never be in right. anything in my life. Feel that. So I will give my trophy to Teal. Excellent choice. Excellent mm -hmm. choice. I was between the two of them. So yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, although Fred being the MVP is just because he made me smile would not because anything he did was actually like, Oh no, a hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so like, truthfully, when you think about it, he like took advantage of somebody that he thought might've been suffering from severe PTSD. Absolutely. Food. Like really Alvin Sanders is my MVP to be fair, which is fair because truthfully, Christopher judge is mine. Right. Right. But like so. also teal? Yes. Yes. So um you know I always feel like we do such a strong job talking about the episode. <laughs> and then we just go, all right, we're done. Okay, like, hey, bye. Hey bye. Um our our outro needs some work. Probably. But that's a problem for 2023. Sure we'll enough. Up. We'll come up with something. It'll be our... Uh, new Year, New year. Us. Yeah, New Year, New Us. Same shows. Something will change. I don't know. Um, but for, for this year, what we can do is uh, email us at Death and Aliens. <laughs> What you can do, not what we can do. You can also <laughs> we, do this next year, also, if you'd like. Yeah, you can do this whatever. Like, you can email us at deathandaliens at gmail.com and follow us on all the social media at Death and Aliens. You can follow me at E-M-K-A-Y underscore superstar. And you can follow me at C-E Cloud 13. And um, hopefully, one of these days, our episodes will not be riddled with technical problems. That um, would be lovely. That would be lovely. We will see you all for a wonderful Thriller Thursday. It'll be something. Bye.